Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is joint work with my advisor, uh, Amal Ahmed. So uh, I am also talking about gradual typing. Uh, and uh, the view that we're taking here is gradually typed language lets you start out with a dynamically typed program. You know, you can rapidly prototype it. And then gradually over time, as the program stabilizes, it's more important uh, to rule out the bugs. Uh, you can add static typing. Uh, compare this to your life without gradual typing. Uh, so maybe, uh, oh, no. <laughs> OK, well, hopefully the words at the top and bottom aren't too important. Uh, uh, so compare that to your life without gradual typing. So maybe you're a startup in the 2000s, so you're going to use the hippest technology, Ruby on Rails. Uh, and then uh, maybe if you're, uh, uh, after a few years, you realize uh, that maybe this wasn't the best idea, and you decide to rewrite your entire program in Scala to have better performance and better maintainability. Uh, and of course, that takes a lot of work. And uh, in the translation process, you can introduce the bugs. Uh, now, compare that to your life with gradual typing. So you would, of course, use a better language like Racket. Uh, and then uh, gradually, over time, you would be able to uh, add type annotation annotations to your program until you get a typed program. Uh, and uh, not only is it easier to do, but uh, it's the same underlying program, right? So you didn't introduce any bugs. And uh, I'm a PL semanticist. So when I see a property like can't introduce bugs, I think theorem, uh, which is at the top of this slide. Uh, <laughs> So maybe the theorem, so how would we state this as a theorem? Well, we could say, oh, well, uh, if all I did was add an type annotations to the program, then t and t prime have the same type erasure, so they should be equivalent programs. Uh, but as you might have seen from the last couple talks, uh, this isn't uh, the model that gradual typing provides. Um, so instead, the model is that more typing means more type checking, uh, but either statically or dynamically. So uh, we'll take a factorial example, sorry. Uh, and you know, maybe we start with a dynamically typed factorial function. Uh, then we make it a number to number function. Uh, but finally, we realize, oh, it should only take uh, natural numbers. And uh, if we apply this uh, function in a dynamically typed setting, uh, then, well, yeah, for the first two things, maybe it diverges, maybe it returns. Uh, zero, who knows? Uh, but in the last one, we definitely get a type error. It says you applied this natural to natural function on something that's not a natural number. Okay. And so, how do we form? So, what should this property be uh, formalized as? Well, uh, a few years ago, uh, at Snapple, this paper by Seek, Vitusek, Chimini, and Boyland, uh, they produce. Uh, they propose this property they called the dynamic gradual guarantee. Uh, and that's a, a mouthful, so I like to call it the graduality property uh, because it's, in some sense, the parametricity property for gradual types. And we'll see a little more of that connection later. And so the model uh, that we have of our programmers is that the typing annotations, they get more precise uh, over time. So for instance, our factorial example, we started with a dynamically typed function, and uh, it became more precise being a natural to natural function. And we formalize this with a, uh, an ordering on types called the precision ordering. Uh, and uh, it's probably a little confusing, but the left is the less precise type, and the right is the more precise type. And uh, take it up with every single person in gradual typing if you don't like that. Uh, so uh, the rules are that the dynamic type is the least precise type. Uh, it's a reflexive and transitive uh, relation. And uh, the weird one is that every type constructor, including the function type, is uh, covariant in its arguments. So, so yeah, this is not uh, the subtyping uh, ordering. Um, and then we formalize this uh, term precision ordering that says that t prime is the same as t, but has more precise type annotations. So they have the same type erasure, but every type annotation in t is less precise than the corresponding type annotation in t prime. Then the graduality theorem says, which is up there, if t is less precise than t prime, then either 
uh, T prime catches a type error that may or may not have been caught in the original program, or uh, they both diverge or they both reduce to a value. So either T prime catches a type error, in which case you know nothing about T's behavior, or they do the same thing. Um, so now we have this nice property. It kind of captures the advantage of gradual typing over uh, uh, the 2000s. And uh, we say, how do we prove this? So um, in the paper uh, that I showed before, they prove this by a simulation argument. Um, so you basically, if T1 is less precise than T1 prime, and T1 prime takes a step to T2 prime, then, well, you need to come up with some T2 prime that is less precise than T2 prime. Uh, and, you know, I mean, it's fine to prove things by simulation, but uh, it's kind of a tedious argument. Uh, and they have to add new uh, rules, so they have to add, make more terms related uh, in order to get the inductive hypothesis to go through. So it's unclear why those were the right rules to add. Uh, the proof is very syntactic, so it's not a very enlightening proof, I would say, uh, uh, to read. Uh, and uh, sad face, uh, not many people are going out and proving uh, this graduality property. Uh, a few of them are, and they're all basically uh, variations of this technique, but there have been a lot of papers that say that they explicitly wanted this property as a design goal, but didn't uh, prove it because it was too hard. Uh, so, uh, so I think maybe we need a new technique for proving graduality, and that's what we present in this paper. So um, uh, the two main components are that we don't use simulation, uh, but we instead give, uh, we use the notion of uh, contextual error approximation as to uh, define our ordering. Um, and the key idea is that uh, certain casts in the system form what are called embedding projection pairs. Um, and there's kind of an analogy between uh, this graduality property and parametricity, where the EP pairs, which is embedding projection pair, uh, corresponds to the relations in the parametricity theorem. Okay, so let's uh, see this contextual error approximation property. So the idea is we can think of this graduality property as defining an ordering on the types of effects that a program can have. Uh, at the bottom of the ordering is the type error, um, and then diverging and termination are above it. And this is uh, different from the usual notion of ordering on effects that you'll see in, for example, partial correctness, where divergence would be the least element. Um, and then uh, there's an easy way to lift an ordering on effects to an ordering on programs using context. Uh, so we say we're going to define an ordering on two terms of the same type, A, and we say uh, T prime error approximates T if for any uh, program context, so this is a program with a hole in it that can be filled in by programs of type A. Well, very similar to before. The one, if I plug T prime into the context, it reduces to a type error. Uh, otherwise, they both diverge or they both uh, terminate. So they're ordered by this ordering on effects. Okay, so what's up my sleeve? I just seem to have restated uh, the earlier property. Well, the trick is, if you can state your property as a contextual something, then you can use proof by logical relation. Yay. Um, and so we present a logical relation that's sound for uh, contextual error approximation, and it's a little different from uh, from previous uh, logic relations because they're mostly based on uh, this other notion of approximation, uh, but we figured out how to do it and the details are in the paper. Okay, so with this contextual error ordering, we uh, can immediately define a kind of special case of the graduality theorem when T and T prime, uh, when T is less than T prime and they have the same type A, then the graduality theorem should just say, yes, they're uh, in a contextual ordering. But more generally, uh, if T is less than T prime, less precise than T prime, and they have two different types, A and A prime, all I know is that there's an ordering between the types. Uh, and this is like really hard to write out horizontally, uh, so I like to write it out as a kind of square like this. So this says, if T is less precise than T prime and it has type A, then it should have a less precise type uh, than A prime. And uh, um, this is where this starts to be this analogy with uh, parametricity. So we want to relate programs of two different types. And this is exactly what we do when we prove a parametricity theorem. So if I have, uh, I won't get into too much detail, but in uh, parametricity, when you have a polymorphic uh, term, then you relate, to, uh, you relate two different instantiations of it, which are at different types. 
by instantiating uh, the type uh, using some relation. And so kind of going back to the other side, we can say, oh, well, what we really want is for every a less precise than a prime, we want to have some relation, some error approximation relation that's a heterogeneous relation across the two different types. OK. And so how are we going to define this? Well, as we saw in the previous talks, the nice thing about gradual typing is when the types don't match, you can just cast. So uh, there's two natural ways that I could cast here. I could either say I'll cast t from a to a prime and that, say that that's error approximates t prime. Or vice versa, I could cast t prime to a and ask for that to hold. And the nice thing about the casts is that these two different natural definitions turn out to be equivalent. Um, and this will follow from some properties I'm going to talk about in a second. And then the graduality theorem uh, is stated as follows. If t is less precise than t prime, then they're in this error approximation relation up to a cast on one side or the other. OK. And so um, next, I want to show you uh, the three main lemmas that we use to prove this relation, uh, or yeah, to prove the graduality theorem. And uh, I don't want to go into uh, details of logic relation, but uh, this should give you some ideas about properties of uh, gradually typed languages and uh, how these casts work. Um, so the first property is this embedding projection pair property. So um, what we're going to show is that whenever we have this relation, a less than a prime, less precise than a prime, uh, then the casts between them form what's called an embedding projection pair. And so to distinguish these, uh, I'm going to write the embedding cast, which goes from a prime to a, as going up. And that's the up cast. And vice versa, the projection goes from a down to a prime to the more precise type. Uh, and I'll write it going down. And so the embedding projection pair, uh, embedding projection pairs are defined by the following two properties. First, if I start with T prime of type A prime of the uh, more precise type, and I cast up to, precise, to the less precise type A and back down, well, A was less precise, so T prime should really satisfy that type A. And so this should be modulo slowing my program down a little bit, uh, contextually equivalent. Uh, on the other hand, if I start with T of type A and I cast down to A prime uh, and back up, um, then, well, maybe T doesn't actually uh, satisfy this more precise type A prime, so maybe it errors, but otherwise it should have the same behavior. And so we can formalize that exactly as this error approximation property. And so these two properties together form an embedding projection pair. Uh, and then uh, our first main lemma is the EP pair lemma, which says whenever A is less than A prime, uh, the cast between them form an embedding projection pair. And we can prove it by induction over the, uh, the rules for precision, similar to the way that you can define uh, coercions from derivations of subtyping. And in particular, uh, we can interpret this weird covariant function rule. Uh, but I won't go into too much details. If you want to read about that, you can read our paper, or you can read a paper from 1971 by Dana Scott. Uh, um, OK. so. Uh, the next main lemma is the factorization lemma. And this one shows that you know, even though we can cast from basically any type to any other in gradual typing, really all of the information is actually encoded in these embedding projection pairs. So whenever I have any cast from A to B in my gradually typed language, it's equivalent to casting from A all the way up to the dynamic type and down to the type B. And uh, this one, as mentioned by Ron uh, in his keynote, this was originally uh, proven by Hengline in 1994. But the lesson here is that uh, for the purposes of proving the gradual guarantee, at least, all you really need are these up and down casts. Okay. And then uh, for our third lemma, this one's a bit bigger, uh, but it's pretty simple. Whenever we have a sequence of three types, uh, A1 less precise than A2 less precise than A3, then the casts between A1 and A3 both factor through A2. Uh, and uh, so reading it from right to left, this says that the EP pairs, that the upcast and downcast compose. Uh, but reading it from left to right, this one says that uh, we can, when we want to prove properties like the, gradual, uh, the graduality property, we can break the big cast on the left into a composition of smaller casts. 
Um, okay, and then so to sort of summarize our uh, proof technique, yeah, you first you make our logic relation for error approximation, and you can just copy ours. Uh, then you prove these three uh, lemmas, and then establish by induction whenever t is less than t prime, this error approximation holds up to cast. Um, okay, and so uh, you know maybe all of these words kind of sound, kind of sound very familiar to you if you've been around contracts and gradual typing before. Uh, and that's because uh, Robbie Fendler, Matthias Bluma, and Matthias Felison uh, were trying some very similar ideas uh, applied to contracts in the mid-2000s. Uh, uh, but they didn't convince Twitter to use a uh, racket. Um, and so uh, their idea was to model contracts as uh, pairs of projections um, with a similar idea in mind, that a contract should either error or preserve the behavior of the original program. And pairs of projections are not the same thing as embedding projection pairs, but uh, are, have similar motivations. And so the simplest way to say it, I would say, is that pairs of projections are kind of untyped, or sort of the best approximation that you can get to EP pairs in an untyped language, which is the setting that they were doing. OK. So, um, so as future work, uh, we would really want to try to push this analogy between graduality and parametricity further. So, uh, maybe we could even prove the graduality theorem as a corollary from some kind of parametricity theorem. And uh, if we're going to make a logical relation anyway for some other advanced feature like parametricity or non-interference for a security type language, maybe we can share work between these two different uh, logical relations. Okay. And so uh, um, just to conclude, uh, we've presented a new formulation and proof of this graduality property. Uh, the most important component is that these uh, up and down casts form embedding projection pairs. Uh, the graduality property is to gradual typing as parametricity is to parametric polymorphism. And that the graduality theorem and the contracts as projections at work really are about the same thing. Okay. And uh, thank you. Thank you. So, some theoretical question. Is an embedding projection, projection pair related to an adjunction? Uh, yes. Halfway between an adjunction and an equivalent? Uh, yeah, so an embedding projection pair um, is uh, slightly stronger than being a Galois connection, which is the same as being an adjunction when you're talking about orderings. Um, so, I think the word for it in category theory is uh, it's called a co reflection. Uh, but, yeah, it's basically, yeah. So it's like an adjunction where one of them is injective. Okay. So your equivalence up to embedding and projection suggests that you have an equational theory for optimizing away casts. Have you thought about that? Uh, actually, I have. Uh, <laughs> it's funny you ask. Um, we had a paper earlier this year at FSCD where we made a kind of axiomatic presentation of all this stuff. Uh, and that was the motivation was uh, to prove uh, moving casts around was uh, correct. Could your contextual error approximation be augmented with costs to also capture a notion of is faster? Um, so I think uh, you wouldn't be able to phrase the theorem exactly in this way if you incorporated costs. Uh, I'm not sure really uh, of a way to do it. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Okay, so now related to the, the validation of your proof technique. So have you tried uh, proving the graduality result for uh, systems for which it, wasn't, it was just left as future work? Uh, and also, can you compare the, how, how does the complexity and the length of the proofs with your approach compared to the simulation technique? Uh, okay, so the first one, no, we, had, we just uh, demonstrated on something where it was already known, like a pretty simple language. Um, uh, and as for complexity, I mean, it's pretty hard to directly compare. I would say uh, that um, uh, the main, I would say, I don't know, I, I think it's not uh, quite right to say one's more complex than the other, but I would say uh, either way, even if you preferred the syntactic simulation argument, I think uh, the lemmas that we prove uh, 
in this approach would be useful for designing gradually typed languages. So, I mean, but yeah, maybe it's taste at that point. But I'll use this one. <laughs> so, following the, the keynote on the analogy with analogy as an abstraction, <laughs> uh, are both graduality and parametricity instances of the same abstract object? Um, uh, uh, I think they're not quite the same, but they do have, there is a common abstraction between them. And uh, at this, uh, this paper we had earlier this year at FSCD, um, we use something called uh, double categories uh, to axiomatize this property, and they're very similar to reflexive graph categories, which are used to, um, to formalize parametricity. So that would be a, a formal connection. So t there is time, and there is a very popular question, which you, uh -oh. you, you might not uh, <laughs> like me asking, but OK, that's the, the power of the crowd. Is there non-anecdotal non evidence to support the view that writing programs is quicker in untyped languages, which appears to be <laughs> a motivation of gradual typing? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> All right. uh, I mean, there's plenty of empirical evidence that people do use do write their giant programs in dynamically typed languages. Right. Uh, I guess that counts. So does, does this, uh, to finish, does, does uh, your result uh, help, might help design gradual parametric languages? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Max.